filters to eat light? Uh, yes, uh, good question, and, and yes, uh, uh, street lights uh, have a few uh, emission lines, uh, primarily sodium and mercury, uh, that can be selectively filtered, and that can improve the contrast and the signal to noise of the images that you obtain with the telescope. It's also important for those who look through the telescope, but it is applicable to imaging. And so uh, there are filters available for this telescope that can help filter street lights and the, and the resultant light pollution. Uh, generally, uh, this, and it is, it is optional, uh, it is particularly, it's, it's most useful when imaging emission nebulae because they're, they're, uh, they're, they're very, uh, they have also very particular emission lines. Uh, so if a nebula is a primarily a hydrogen emission line, it might be emitting a few specific colors like hydrogen alpha, hydrogen beta, oxygen three. So we can filter that very nicely. A broad spectrum object like a galaxy is less effective with um, light pollution filters because we're, we would be removing uh, a, a significant part of the galaxy spectrum. So if we, for example, like sodium and mercury, some, and we usually use kind of broadband filters, we would be removing a big segment of the galaxy's emission if, if we used a light pollution filter. Some are still available, but uh, basically a nebula will benefit from a light pollution filter. A galaxy and many stars will not so much. Um, and so it is an optional accessory. I would say for your application, for using this telescope, it's not necessary. Um, you won't have a problem with moon and planets, but deep sky will be fine from this area, uh, the brighter deep sky objects. If you start to, to go after more elusive, uh, fainter emission nebulae that have poor contrast, that is, that is an option that um, we, you know, we can add to the telescope, a light pollution filter, which can help. But I would say for now that actually you will be just fine without using a filter.